So this is a pretty complete book on the use of the closed guard in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Hi guys, my name is Joe and welcome to Fighting Words, the martial arts library. On this channel I review martial arts books and talk about other martial arts related subjects. The subject for today's review is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, The Closed Guard by BJ Penn with Dave Camarillo, Glenn Cordoza, and Eric Krauss. That's right, this book has four authors. It was originally published in 2009. Uh, BJ Penn is pretty famous as a mixed martial arts fighter. Uh, he got his start actually in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu trained with a number of folks, including Half Gracie. I think he's notable as getting his black belt in like a three-year time period. So really exceptional in that endeavor. Uh, Dave Camarillo is a judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Um, he's known for his flying arm bars. He was the grappling coach for uh, the American Kickboxing Academy. Uh, Eric Krauss and Glenn Cordoza uh, have both been professional fighters in Muay Thai. Uh, Mr. Cordoza has also spent some time in mixed martial arts. They are probably better known for their writing, however. Both of them are pretty prolific writers in things like martial arts and fitness. As mentioned, this book is on the closed guard, which is the most fundamental guard in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu system. Uh, the book itself was published by Victory Belt, so you know that means color photos. Oftentimes we get photos from multiple angles, and the chapters themselves have color-coded sections on them. Section one of this book is on both solo and partner drills. Uh, a lot of the solo drills are more about movement. Uh, the partner drills have more to do with drilling submissions, usually without the use of the hands. Section two is called Fundamentals. What this actually comes down to is it's more on breaking the opponent's posture. In other words, if they're in your guard, if they're between your legs, if they're sitting back, it's very difficult to launch attacks. So to break their posture, you pull them down so you can begin looking for chokes and arm locks. And it also covers grip fighting in this. Uh, those of you who practice Jeet Kune Do will recognize some of the strategies here as being attacked by drawing, where Mr. Pin shows himself baiting his opponent into reaching out for him so he can get a hold of his opponent's arm. Section 3 is on chokes, and this is pretty much divided into four sections. Um, the first is gi chokes, that's chokes with the gi that the opponent is wearing, the uniform. Uh, most of these are variations of the cross collar choke. Uh, he also includes arm chokes, chokes with the arms. Those are pretty limited here, but they do include some common chokes like the arm triangle or the guillotine. Uh, he also includes a section on triangle chokes after that. and there's a lot there based on setting up the triangle. And then he gets to triangle finishes. That's the fourth subsection of section three. And in that, we're looking at, you know, how to use the triangle in order to set up other submissions, for instance. Like you got the guy trapped in your triangle and he can't get his arm across, you know, maybe turn that into an arm lock. Or if you got a guy trapped in a triangle and he starts to stand up to defend, you can sweep him from there. So once you've actually got the triangle locked in, how to continue attacks using different techniques. Section 4 is the longest of the book. It's over 100 pages, and it is on arm attacks. As you might expect, uh, the Juji Katame style arm bar features heavily here. So it's divided into four sections total, or four subsections. First is straight armbar, followed by shoulder locks, mostly the Kimura attack, uh, omoplata setups. The omoplata is sort of a hammer lock using the legs, so an entire section is devoted in setting up that position. And then the next subsection is on omoplata finishes, 
which is, again, once you've gotten into position, what do you do? Well, maybe you use it to get on top instead of being in guard. Maybe you have the guy locked in position and you have to use like a wrist compression, you know, wrist flex, in order to get the guy to tap because he's not tapping to the shoulder lock. I should note that the straight armbar subsection is actually further divided. So he covers Juji Gatame style attacks, you know, the cross armbar style, against an opponent who's kneeling, who has one leg up, so sort of half kneeling, and also an opponent who's standing. Also in this section, he covers what he refers to as the inverted armbar, where you can see from this photograph, you have the opponent's wrist sort of trapped between your shoulder and your neck, and you're applying inward or downward pressure on the elbow. So this sort of inverts how the Jujigatame style armbar is typically done. The final section is on sweeps and transitions from close guard. So a sweep in these terms is basically to reverse position. You know, off balance your opponent, he winds up on the bottom, you wind up on top. And it's divided into different sections on, again, whether the opponent is kneeling on both knees, whether they are half kneeling if they're on like one knee, or whether they're standing, and how to use the different sorts of sweeps and transitions in order to put your opponent down or to get yourself into a more advantageous position. Now, as you've seen through the photographs, they are color photographs. Uh, one thing that's very helpful is that Dave Camarillo, who is the, the uke, the, the demo dummy for this, he is in a red gi while Mr. Penn is in a white gi. This makes it easy to discern who's doing what. Uh, a lot of times there are photographs that are taken from multiple angles in order to show details. Uh, sometimes there are close-ups to sort of, you know, give a better idea of, you know, what's going on with a particular grip. And throughout, each technique is given a pretty detailed paragraph. It often goes over things like strategy, like, you know, I'm going to use this if the opponent does this, or this is best if this is for an opponent who's decided to stand up or, you know, who's hiding their elbows or what have you. As far as the pros go, uh, I'm a big fan of the format, uh, of the detail that it shows. You know, Victory Belt, when it put out martial arts books, and it generally doesn't anymore, did an excellent job of having color photographs, color-coded organization, and very often having pictures from multiple angles so you could see what was going on. So this has all those hallmarks, does it very well. Also, when it comes to the closed guard itself, it's pretty exhaustive. You know, there, there might be a handful of things about the closed guard that aren't in here, but they're going to be like lesser known and sort of lower percentage techniques. I would also say one of the benefits of this is that the techniques are so interrelated with one another. You know, you can set up an omoplata by going for a triangle, for instance, or a grip break you learned in section two is going to show up in section four. As far as the cons go, the only thing I have in, in my outline is that it's limited in scope. It's hard to fault the book for doing what it says on the cover. This is about the closed guard. Uh, if you are trying to get more into the study of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, there's a lot more to it than just the closed guard. There are other forms of guard, an extensive array of various guard types to use. There, of course, are Various submissions, top positions, leg attacks, takedowns and throws. There's a self-defense curriculum. So you don't really get anything except close guard here. But also, again, that's exactly what it says it's going to do. <laughs> so, again, it's sort of hard for me to criticize for it, but I had to find something because I need something to put into my con section with each of these reviews. Okay, recommendations. Um, if you are new to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or maybe intermediate level, 
Uh, this is a great resource for really understanding the fundamentals of closed guard. Uh, I think if you are newish to grappling, you're probably going to wind up on the bottom in a lot of cases. So having a resource that focuses on what do I do once I'm on the bottom, that's not a bad thing to have. For self-defense purposes, I think the section on transitions can be good, but this is for sport jacketed grappling, so it doesn't include things like how to defend against punches. You know, it's that's not what the book's about, although there is some stuff, again, that you can take from it. Like, if I wind up on the bottom, how do I reverse the position? There's a whole chapter on it. Anyway, that's all I have for this week. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video, and if you would like to support the channel, please consider donating to my coffee account. You can also use that account to give me homework in the form of recommending books or other topics you'd like to see me do. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you around.